So let me ask you a quick question. Which of the following sentences is correct? No me gusta el café, pero el té. O no me gusta el té, sino el café. At the end of this video, you are going to know the answer because I'm going to teach you how to say but correctly in Spanish. Hi everyone, I'm Daniela from Tell Me Spanish and I'm here to help you become fluent in this language. So, as you can see from the examples in this video, there are two ways to say but in Spanish, pero and sino. So stick with this video because I'm going to teach you what's the difference between these two words uh, and I'm also going to give you a quiz and some resources so you can go a little bit deeper into this topic. So let's start with these two words. These two words are what we call conjunctions in Spanish. We use them to connect words, but also to create some contrast between the information that we're saying and the information we mentioned in the sentence, uh, in the previous sentence. So we use pero with negative and affirmative sentences. This word allows us, like I was saying, to join sentences and create a contrast between the information I just said. For example, me gustaría ir, pero no puedo. I would like to go, but I can. That's my excuse every weekend. Example number two, no hay pastel, pero quedan galletas. There is no more cake, but there are some cookies left. If you see the information that we deliver after pero, is creating a contrast with what we said just before. I would like to go, but I can. So this is when you use pero in Spanish, when you want to give contrasting information. However, pero can also have another meaning in your conversations. For example, ay, pero que exagerada. Jeez, you're such an exaggerator. In this case, we're using pero to emphasize and because we're just using it with that purpose, it might not have a direct translation all the time, okay? So let's go with sino. Sino is also used to connect sentences, but you're also going to use it to correct the information that you just said. Because of this, sino only works, and this is very important, it only works with negative sentences. And over here, I have some examples and check how this word is going to be correcting what we just said. No quiero ensalada, sino una hamburguesa. I don't want a salad, but rather a burger. Jesus, are you joking? Of course, it's always a burger. Number two, Laura no es maestra, sino abogada. Laura is not a teacher, but a lawyer. And number three, and pay attention to this one because this one is important. No rentamos la casa, sino que la vendimos. We didn't rent the house, but we'd rather sell it. So if you check these examples, sino can work with nouns. But if you're contrasting information, if you're joining verbs, like example number three, you have to use the relative pronoun que, sino que. No la rentamos, sino que la vendimos. This is going to be only used if you're joining verbs, okay? So, before we finish, I want to give you a pronunciation and a conversation tip. Check that sino is a single word. If it's a single word, you're using it with this meaning. However, you're going to find sentences where sino is two words and is si, no. In this case, you're using these two words to create conditional sentences. For example, and check how the pronunciation is different. Si no llueve, voy a ir. If it doesn't rain, I'm going to go. So pay attention to the context and the pronunciation so you can determine which word is being used. So that's it for today. Before I leave you, I want to give you some resources in the description just in case you want to go a little bit deeper into this topic. 
The first one is a video with this same lesson just in Spanish, just in case you want to practice your listening a little bit more. The second one is a guide with the difference between pero and sino. I know, we already checked them, but in this guide you're going to find more examples, different structures, and of course a quiz so you get to practice. Number three is the direct link to the quiz just in case you're ready to test your knowledge. And number four is a guide to conjunctions in Spanish. These words are super important because they're going to help you join your sentences and you're going to sound more natural and fluid. So that's it for today, guys. If you like the video, please hit the like button and I hope to see you soon. Bye.